Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So at the start of 2020, I filmed a video called How to Film at Home Workouts. COVID had just hit, PTs, yoga teachers, fitness instructors of all kinds were clambering for ways to reach their clients from home. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick, concise breakdown of the equipment you need to get high quality videos online, on YouTube, and delivered to your clients. So since I uploaded a similar video in 2020, I've had quite a few people reach out and ask for the technicalities, what camera to use, what microphones to use, and stuff like that. I've actually even had people reach out and done some Zoom consulting with them, running through, okay, this is the kit you need to buy, then they get the kit, this is how you set it up, this is how you edit it. In this video, I'm just gonna lay that all out there so it's easy for you guys to follow. So let's go into our living room, front room, slash makeshift yoga studio and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so this is the reality. This is where I was just filming. Uh, and if we move in to the living room, here we are. So what we usually do is we just find a clean backdrop, close these doors over. Before you get to equipment, you wanna think about the aesthetics. Make sure you've got a nice clean backdrop, nothing too busy or, you know, whatever suits your style of teaching and your brand. So I've closed those doors and this is the reality. I've got a couple of lights and I'll delve into that later but we've got the few main things that we need here. We've got stabilization, we've got a camera, we've got a workout mat or yoga mat obviously and we have the all important headset and microphones. So something that is often overlooked but super important is a tripod, something to sit your camera or your phone or whatever you're filming on, on something stable, it's gonna hold it and you're gonna be able to get your angle perfect. So these little tripods are easy to come by. The, you know, tripods you can pay a thousand pounds, but this little one, 20 pounds off Amazon. It's linked below, it's a Manfrotto, it's good quality, it's super lightweight, it's super easy to use. One thing I would pair that with if you're using a phone to film your workout is a little clip. You clip them onto a tripod and it'll hold your phone. Pair that with a tripod and you're sorted. Secondly, and most importantly, whether you're using your phone, camera, whatever it is, is audio. Now this is a huge game changer for me. I've spent a long time, many years, through uni and professionally trying to figure out audio. What's the best way to film people? All that sort of stuff. I've used a variety of different things. So off camera microphones. So something that might just be like poking in here, which is how I filmed the intro. Uh, lapel mics, which you might be familiar with if a newsreader is kind of, or someone on the TV has a little microphone here. That's a lapel mic. Or what I think is best for workouts, which is this thing. A headset, you know, pop star esque. Um, it sits here, it's consistent. So the distance between my mouth and the microphone is consistent. The disadvantage with the lapel mic is if you're moving your head whilst you're instructing people, your voice is gonna come in and be really close to the microphone and it's gonna come out and be really far away. People are gonna be hitting volume up because you've gone really quiet and then oh, volume down. If you've got a microphone, you'll be able to deliver clear instructions consistently and that is what is most important with at home workouts as I'm sure you're aware you're not always looking at the screen as you're running through different movements or doing different yoga poses but if you can hear your instructor clearly and concisely it makes a huge difference and the quality of your videos really ramps up now this is another this is the game changer for me it is these Rode wireless mics. So if you've ever filmed with a mic before, you might be familiar with the packs that you have to sit in your back pocket, clip to your leggings or your shorts, however you're instructing, and it's super lightweight and it probably falls off as you're jumping around or if you're doing a certain yoga pose, it probably gets in the way. These little microphones are so light. Let me just unclip it here. They're tiny, they're so small, and they're super, lightweight and also it is super easy to use but with the big packs um, you're on radio signals you're on an analog signal so you have to tune one pack to the other you're more likely to get interference so this is a digital 
signal, like Bluetooth or whatever. It pairs super easy with the with the with its partner there, and one attaches to your camera, and one attaches to your person with your headset mic, and it works an absolute dream. What is amazing about these is they're about 140 pounds, which for a high quality microphone is super cheap. I bought a pair of Sennheisers uh, about 10 years ago. They were second hand and I scoured eBay for ages and I think they were 350 quid. And these blow those out of the water for simplicity, for ease of use, for weight. So the Rode Wireless goes fantastic. And the great thing about them as well is you can get two different cables. This attaches to one of the little packs and then into your camera, uh, but it doesn't need to be a camera. This is black to black. You see the little ends there, that's black, that's black. You can get black to gray and attach it to your phone. So if you don't want to invest a lot in a big camera, get these Rode wireless goes, get the cable that attaches it to your phone and it will be a game changer for filming your at home workouts. I cannot recommend these enough. Anytime I post these on my stories or on my Instagram, I always get comments back from people who've used them agreeing with me on how good they are. Okay, so let's move on. We've got our microphone, we've got our tripod and our way of stabilizing our camera. The final thing we need is a camera. So there's usually two different cameras that I end up recommending. And that is either your phone, so anything from like an iPhone 7 or 8 upwards. I've actually used clips from my phone before on the channel with a good microphone and I've had comments asking what camera I used at that specific time. The quality of the camera on the iPhones and a lot of new smartphones is super high. However, if you're looking to invest in a new camera, if teaching at home workouts is sort of like a, a viable career option for you now with the way things are, then I would recommend investing in a DSLR, AKA a big camera. This is the 850D. This is what I always recommend. So advantages of this are flippy out screen, so you can see yourself, interchangeable lenses, if you want to upgrade your lens at any point or you need to get a wider or longer lens, audio input, not all cameras have audio inputs, and it also has a huge variety of filming options. So it can film at 4K, it can film at 1080p. If you're uploading to YouTube or just delivering over the internet, I would always recommend just 1080p. If it gets to the point where people are commissioning you to deliver at-home workouts, either say for a fitness platform or for the website, they might ask for 4K, but for me, I believe that's a little bit unnecessary. A lot of the compression rates of things like YouTube kind of usually kill 4K anyway, and not many people will be watching it 4K, but let's not get into that. So that's probably things you need to look for. A flippy out screen so you can see yourself, audio inputs, maybe interchangeable lenses, and that's about it. So let's say you've got yourself a headset, you've got yourself a camera, a tripod, lighting. Now, Helen's very fortunate that I work as a photographer and I just let her use my lights for when she's filming. There is some great sort of cheap options out there. I think in the range of about 70 pounds, they're linked below. You get them off Amazon. Uh, they are constant light bulbs. I've recommended these to clients in the past and they have got great results from them. So I'll link them below, super simple option. If you don't want to invest in big bulky lights because you're filming at home, use a window. Get just behind that window, look at that, that's beautiful light, and there you go. Just make sure you're not standing with the light behind you, obviously. Stand with the light, I think everyone knows that kind of now, everyone's taken enough selfies to know where the good light is. So let's get on to camera settings. You've got yourself a big camera, You've got all your audio and everything like that. Camera settings, super simple. Here are the settings you need to use. Set your camera to record 1080p, 25 frames a second. Set your shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. Set your f-stop to as low as your lens will go. So that might be f2.8, f4, something in between. Set your ISO to auto. So the reason you set your ISO to all is we've got a cloudy day with us here, but sometimes the sun might come in and out. And if you have set your camera to specific settings, suddenly your picture is gonna get super bright, then a cloud comes in and it's gonna darken up. Set your ISO to auto and your camera will compensate for that as you film. So I think we've broken down everything. We've broken down audio, camera, 
stabilization, lighting, and camera settings. And I hope that helps you guys on your journey. Okay, everyone, I hope you found that useful and I hope it helps you get set up on your way on your fitness video journey. Like I said earlier, all the equipment used is listed in the comments below. And if you've got any further questions, maybe topics that I didn't cover, just let me know in the comments. All the best, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.